Hi there, I'm Construction Gamer and this is another UK mod showcase for Transport Fever 2. We've got an absolutely packed episode today and we're starting with something a little bit different from Steve M4 and that is the British Traction Engine available from I think 90, 1850 and it is a cargo vehicle, it's just charming isn't it, little uh, traction engine there. This is just the kind of standalone version of it but there are other versions which we'll take a look at the depot shortly there's one going past there with a trailer i guess you'd call it i'm not sure what else you'd call it but they can carry varying cargoes i've just uh, put this one on just so you can actually see the traction engine itself so it can actually do some work around your map if you uh, if you desire i'm not sure if it'd be much i think looking at it the top speed what are we doing 16 miles per hour so it's, it's not going to break any records but it might be slightly faster than a horse perhaps but it's just just nice isn't it to have especially with it being able to carry different cargoes and things so yeah, there we are we have british traction engines in the game now from traction engines you can just see them in the background there we've got a steam engine this is the ger great eastern railway 440 again by steve m4 i think he'd had a little bit of a break from producing models but he's back again with some excellent uh, steam vehicles or traction engine and a steam engine as well available from 1900 we'll take a look at the stats in the depot shortly there are a couple of variations we've got this ger kind of i think it's more of a bluey purple isn't it and then on the back there is a uh, an lner is it london northeastern railway in the kind of apple green again it's just another excellent railway steam engine model by steve m4 as you'd come to as you'd come to expect like i said a few different variants of these available just a nice early steam steam locomotive as i go into the trees there we are I'll let that go past we do have some thoroughly modern uh, trains to feature shortly but before i do that i wanted to just feature the scania r series by jones this it's not a new mod but it's had an update so it's got kind of the rigid vehicles so you've got this rigid tipper which i sort of requested and jones has recreated while well, grand t and myself both asked it seems for a rigid tipper uh, particularly a four axle rigid tipper like this and it just looks great with that tipper on the back so that's finally available and there are others available as well so you've got like um other types of goods that can be transported so yeah this is just i just wanted to feature this tipper because it was a special request of mine and uh, jones appears to have obliged although she was working on the rigids anyway prior to that so yeah it's just uh just looks great doesn't it that's uh that's if you've already got the scania r series that would have updated it's it's within within the scania r series truck pack basically all of those available next we're moving on to some really modern trains which is the class 196 this is by selmy and by meze i think the name is now this is the west midlands railway 196 I'm not sure what the date would be on these because I don't think they're they're out yet, are they? I think they're under testing, so I'm guessing they'd be 2021 for the release date within the game themselves, and it just looks looks great. I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not sold on the West Midlands Railway livery, but the actual model itself looks fantastic. The level of uh, detail that's gone into it and recreating that kind of unique front end that these have got. Now there is this the West Midlands Railway variant and then there's a concept one i'm not sure what that would be but it's just another variant and i think there are people doing reskins of these in various different various different colors and i think they will be hopefully kind of ch transformed into the class 197 for transport for wales rail also because they have a similar front end but there are some uh, minor tweaks i think that the tfw units have to separate them from those but yeah just a really awesome it's, a, it's great to have these in the game it's great to have some modern like up-to-date uh, dmus available for the game and hopefully that will mean we're going to get a 195 anytime soon hopefully fingers crossed or perhaps a reskin of the 196 in northern colors until we get the 195 just as a kind of stand in there are different car lengths and things like that car formations uh, but we'll take a look at those in the depot and just as we pull into the station we're pulling alongside this uh, train here which i'm sure many people will be excited to see that is the bombardier hitachi hs2 train now it is just a reskin of an existing train i can't pronounce or i'm not going to attempt to pronounce the base train and watch it which is created but you will have to subscribe to that as well we'll take a look at that in the in the workshop but basically this is like 
a reskin trying to recreate the well, the Hitachi Bombardier HS2 train, which was their joint bid. Things have got a little bit complicated since Bombardier was bought by, was it Alstom? Have they been purchased by? But yeah, it's just it's great to have HS2 trains, particularly for me, because I am building HS2 on the Northern Powerhouse series currently. So these are going to come in handy. There's different formations, different lengths, which is which will come in handy again just for the varying services capable of 225 miles per hour 360 kilometers per hour i'm not sure if they kind of get up to that sort of speed what are we doing now this is a relatively straight run it's not particularly long though but uh, yeah it is the speeds have been changed to kind of reflect hs2's maximum speed basically but uh, yeah it just looks absolutely fantastic again we'll take a look at the the different formations available in the depot just want to take a look see what sort of speed we're going to get up to before we have to start slowing down so we can, we got up to about 150 on this run i mean it's not the longest run in the world let's just zoom out a little bit so you can see so it's from and over there to ride it's not not the longest run but got back to 150 the creator of this by the way is elliot 85 before i forget just take another moment to appreciate the uh that train now we're not certain what the color scheme will be for hs2 but i think this is fitting for now this is the sort of kind of promotional colors that uh, the hs2 artist representation seem to be sporting at the minute anyway and it does look looks quite nice anyway so there we are that's the hs2 train finally available for transport fever 2 many years before hs2 is actually open Next we have a train which already exists but has been completely remodelled. This is the Class 67 by CW315, Fun Clive and Tank Slapper. They've completely reworked the model just to improve it. They, I think they, they seem to be perfectionists, these models. They really are kind of going over the old models and improving them as basically i guess their skills improve and things i mean i don't think there was anything wrong with the previous class 67 but they are really uh stickler for details i guess so they've recreated the 67 with its unique engine sound and uh yeah just as always the level of detail is exceptional available in a few different varieties at the minute so we've got ews then we've got the rexman shropshire we've got uh, db schenker and i think there is another couple of transfer for whales and a reaver skins available as well and i think somebody might be working on a reskin pack for them to add a few extras but yeah i suppose if we're going to take advantage of the better graphics that we got with transport fever 2 then i guess then all the better really just means we get better models it's getting closer and closer to almost like a train simulator level of graphics i think on some of these models now they really are quite detailed so there we are the remodel of version 2 of the class 67 you'll have to subscribe to this model because it is a brand new model it's not just an update if you want the newer version of this so we're finished looking at the units now we're going to take a look at them in a uh, in a depot so first of all we'll take a look at the road vehicles so if you go to cargo we'll take a look first at the Scania R series, so these are the rigid series, so you've got like um, sliding door box wagon, a tipper, and you've got a double road train type thing here with a trailer on the back. So these really should have some quite good capacity. Let's have a look at, for example, a normal kind of curtain cider, capacity of 52. If you look at the rigid series with a trailer, capacity of 68 to reflect that. Now let's look at the standard tipper, capacity of 52, the rigid tipper, capacity of 38. So yeah, that's that's about right, I think, balanced within the game. But yeah, it's just nice to have these rigid ones, especially maybe for services which aren't carrying that many that much cargo that kind of needs a articulated version with a capacity of 52 so yeah they're they're all available there we've got i think they're line colorable and then you've got some ones with the dhl so that's just great to see and then if we go up a little bit we've got the road locomotive light engine is the uh, the traction engine we've got just the the light engine which just basically acts as a vehicle drives back and forth and then you've got this which can carry food grain plastics machines tools food and goods and it's got a capacity of 20 and then there's one with three wagons attached there's one that's got coal iron stone grain two wagons attached and that one's got a mix so it can carry pretty much whatever you want it to carry mix mix consist i guess you'd call it and then you've got a large wagon and a single flatbed there now let's just take a look if we go up to a horse a horse 12 miles per hour with a capacity of five uh, flatbed 
um, 12 miles per hour, 5 capacity there, and the European 11, hold, 11 miles per hour capacity of 4. So if you go back down to the traction engine, even if you go with a single, you've got a capacity of 8 and a top speed of 16. So they're better than horses, but maybe not better than the road vehicles, which I think become available around the same sort of time. This has got a capacity, uh, top speed of 16. What's this? I'm pretty sure 16 might be a little bit quick for a, for a traction engine, but I guess it's just to compete with the uh, the old DMG console there. So yeah, there's the traction engines that are now available for Transport Fever. Next, we're heading over to the train depot, the railway depot. We're going to look at the steam locomotive first of all, and that is the GER440 Claude Hamilton. 75 miles per hour top speed, 1,551 1, horsepower. So it's not bad for 1,900. I think that's that's all right. And you've got different variants there. So you've got the, the blue purple GER, and then you've got the LNER and the apple green, and a black one there as well. 77 kilonewtons of tractive effort next we're going to take a look at the class 67 so yeah this is the brand new model c uh, class 67 3244 horsepower 125 miles per hour top speed these are for mixed use aren't they for light freight and for passenger services you've got ews arriva transport uh, trains wales caledonian sleeper ews another one just a different number chilton's rexham and shropshire chilton's thomas tenelford and then you've got dbs db schenker colas transport well, i'm not sure what that one is that's a little strange color uh, what is it not sure and then you've got the transport for wales new one that um is basically was was that last year it was put on maybe well it's, it's been operating on the on the wag express for a while but in, in recently repainted with the mark four coaches mark four carriages to match so yeah they're available there just yeah a good steam uh, steam no, definitely diesel locomotive. Next, we're going down to the diesel multiple units, and we've got the classic nine, class one nine six. So we've got different variants. We've got the West Midlands Railway one here with the that kind of wild colour scheme. Uh, Ninety nine miles per hour, uh, one thousand horse, one thousand sixty one horse, about two hundred and forty kilonewtons of tractive effort capacity of thirty three. That's a two car unit. I guess maybe a little bit low, part perhaps for a two car unit. But then we do have a four car variant with 75 capacity, obviously the power to match. And then there's two concepts that go with that as well. So we've got the two car unit and then a four car unit. It's just uh, it's just really good to see those in the game. Next, we're going to the electrical multiple units. Now, you need this base train, that one, that one for this to work. This is, is it, it's Italian, isn't it? Based off a something or other. What is it? Opposite, no, oper yeah, operated by Train Italia. I uh, can't remember who the manufacturer was, but yeah, you've got the different variants there, but and then got the HS2 variants here. So you can see the style, physically it's the same, but it looks very much different with the HS2 branding. We've got on this a 160 meter long set. So basically this was a little bit of a request of mine because the standard vanilla stations are 320 meters long. So I thought if you only had the 320 meter long stations available but you still wanted like a long formation then you can put two together and that will fit in a 320 meter long station but you can still kind of recreate the coupling that these services so are going to get rid of those we want the very short set coupling front like that oh and then we've got the cap coupling back set back so i'm guessing it's got the front end nose cone is closed and then on back of this it's got the front end nose cone open and then the front of this open and then the back should be closed oh that's pretty clever i wasn't uh i just kind of sh shoved two very short sets together but you do have those because basically the consist for hs2 are going to be formed of two 200 meter long sets to form a 400 meter long set in real life but obviously the vanilla train stations are only 320 but we do have available as well there is a 200 meter long set which better replicates what's going to be based in real life and then we've got a very long set which is 400 meters but i'm pretty certain i'm not 100 percent but i'm fairly sure that any 400 meter long sets that do operate on hs2 even the captive sets that will only operate on hs2 will be formations of two 200 meter long sets so it'd be something oh, that's be something like that or the hs2 captive sets so yeah it's just uh it's just great to have these available for me to be able to use them on the uh on my hs2 network that i'm building currently so i think i'm going to leave you with the hs2 unit just because it looks fab and i'm just happy that it's available for me to use so i'm going to leave it there for today and say until next time bye bye